Hello everyone and welcome to the R Medicine Conference. In my presentation, I'm going to talk to you about using R Markdown and Office Down to automate clinical trial reporting. After a small introduction, um, I will talk to you about the challenges that we see um, different companies face when it comes to uh, reporting for clinical trials. Then I will talk about uh, using R Markdown to automate the reporting part, and uh, we will dive a little bit deep deeper uh, onto what are the key features of Office Down that you can use on your daily work. By means of introduction, my name is Damian Rajevic and uh, I'm one of the founders of Epsilon. Um, personally, before founding uh, the company, I have worked in different companies and uh, in different programming languages. Uh, in the end, we started working with R and Shiny because it's uh, amazing technology that allows you to uh, build applications rapidly and make sure that they are exactly as your users want it to be. As a company, uh, we have been established uh, over eight years ago and uh, we work with mostly with Fortune 500 companies uh, in different time zones and in different industries. We are a team of uh, 40 plus uh, individuals uh, across uh, the whole world uh, because we are a remote first uh, company. So when it comes to the clinical trials, uh, the common pattern that we see is actually that reporting, uh, it is not easy. Um, of course, uh, the analytics part is always a big challenge. Uh, however, once you have the results, you need to actually put them all into a report. You need to make sure that um, it uh, obeys all the standards and that uh, you are, it can be easily reproduce, uh, reproduced. So it has to contain all the data and the sources that were used to produce the outcome and uh, conclusions. Um, it is prone to errors because when you do it manually and you use copy pasting from Excel, for example, or uh, copy pasting some graphs, uh, charts, um, it is a cumbersome uh, work that takes a lot of time and effort. And of course, whenever you create a report, you need to make sure that you are able to reproduce this report uh, when asked, because this is what uh, regulations uh, require you to do. And uh, I'm jumping into GXP, which is uh, probably very well known to most of you. Uh, it is about ensuring a safe and reliable product. Um, actually, in the whole uh, Europe, uh, GCP, which is good clinical practice, uh, is uh, even a legal obligation for all trials of uh, investigational medical medicinal products. So what is GXP? Uh, it just uh, stands for good X practices. And uh, in X, you can put anything. So it could be C for clinical. Um, you can, it can be L for laboratory or uh, R for review. Um, for us, the most important ones are GCP and GLP. So the good clinical practice and good laboratory practice. When you think about uh, GXP and technology, uh, you can think about three key parts that your products have to ob uh, obey. So the first one is traceability. Um, you need to be able to reconstruct the whole development history of a drug or medical device. So you need to have uh, some kind of a trace of what has been changing when it comes to reports, when it comes to the data, uh, when it comes to the code that was produced for the application. Um, then you need to make sure that you have the accountability. Um, so you need to make sure that you can tell who changed what and when. And the next one is data integrity. So the reliability of data uh, generated by the system. In short, it most uh, usually means that uh, the underlying data source has to uh, be also as a GXP. Um, but it also means that you need to in your report, you need to point to the right sources that you used and make sure that these sources uh, are also reliable. So how R Markdown can help you there? Basically, R Markdown is a very powerful tool because it allows you to make the whole reporting part automated. You can avoid spending time on repeatable tasks and uh, uh, very time-consuming manual uh, report creation. And uh, you focus on the fact that uh, this R Markdown is reproducible. You can keep regenerating it as often as, uh, uh, as many times as you want. And you can you do it with the same data or the new data uh, whenever it is uh, available. Um, what is more, it is testable. So you can create have some chunks of code that you put into your application 
um, or the markdown report uh, to be more precise. And you can test those uh, chunks separately to ensure that they are correct. Uh, R Markdown will allow you to create Word documents, uh, PowerPoint documents, PDF or HTML, whatever you need, it will help you. And it allows you to follow the GXP regulations easily because uh, some parts are fully automated, like making sure that there is an author on the first page, <laughs> just as simple as that, but uh, uh, there are plenty, plenty more. So this is an example of uh, what uh, an R Markdown document looks like. Uh, just before my presentation, there was another one uh, about creating uh, PowerPoint uh, presentations. Uh, so I'm not going to dive too much into details of uh, how to work with R Markdown, but just to give you a very clip, uh, quick uh, glimpse of it. Um, there is a simple syntax to select the title, the output. There's plenty of uh, more other options that you can set here, uh, especially some arguments that can be passed from the outside. Um, and uh, you write a very simple code that is translated, or this is basically a typical markdown, but uh, all the other chunks that are in R are going to be translated into markdown that then is going to be compiled to the final document. So with this simple setup and uh, only 33 or a little bit more lines of code, you're able to create uh, a normal editable Word document that you can then uh, use. So just to give you an overview of what R Markdown actually does, it's uh, under the hood uh, through Kniter, it uh, generates a Markdown report. And it's not only through Kniter, but uh, also some other uh, libraries, but the resulting file, Markdown file, that is intermediate file uh, that is used, this is something that is uh, later processed by a so-called uh, Pandoc uh, system library, and uh, Pandoc renders the final document. Uh, this is important to know that Markdown and Pandoc, these are fully independent from the R environment, so you may uh, have come across them uh, in a very different uh, uh, setup. And it is also important because this is a standard. So whenever you talk to the IT, you can tell them that, okay, R is uh, maybe a little bit uh, new in the company, but in fact, underneath you are using uh, very well-known old and uh, trusted libraries to generate the files. So in the end, it is much easier to actually talk to the IT team and make sure that they understand that uh, this is a, a very good tool to use and it is already approved. And talking about the big picture, the great thing about RStudio Connect is that when you have an R Markdown file, with a single click of a button, you can actually deploy it to RStudio Connect and it is going to be automatically rendered and uh, as many users as you want can actually go, go ahead and read the document. They can download it. And at the same time, you have the whole history of whenever the document was rendered. Uh, you can also track uh, the users that are uh, accessing this file. Whenever you want to, the document to be regenerated, you just uh, click through the interface in RStudio Connect and you have a new file available for your users. So I highly, highly recommend uh, connecting your R markdowns with uh, RStudio Connect. Uh, because there is also one more uh, very useful feature which allows you to set up uh, to periodically automatically regenerate the report. So if you want to create a daily report um, and that is downloadable in, a, in a Word, for example, or HTML, you just set a few parameters and RStudio Connect automatically will regenerate the report for you. And also it can send the report uh, to uh, some other users. So even for us uh, as a, a technical company, uh, we use RStudio Connect to generate some our, our internal reports and we get emails from RStudio that uh, describe uh, what is going on under the hood uh, of our company. So let's talk about Office Down, uh, why we need it and uh, what it actually gives us. First of all, Markdown or R Markdown is generic and it translates uh, to many different file types. So it will translate to PDF, uh, some uh, other formats like Word, uh, PowerPoint, uh, or HTML, and it is not built specifically for Word or, or PowerPoint. Uh, at some point, and this is, these are some live examples, you may be requested to change your reports because there are some uh, specific GXP regulations. And uh, I would like to show you a very practical way of solving those uh, issues because you can spend a lot of time trying to uh, adjust the markdown and trying to search online how to do it. You will try through CSS, it will not work. 
you will try through different uh, hacks and it will get ugly at some point. But uh, Office Down is going to help you a lot with that, even though the tricks are very simple and the, the package itself is not very complex. So the things that you can be asked about is, uh, for example, please create a page with information about the author, the date, uh, all the sources, there need to be a space for a review. It has to be the first page and then there will be a table of contents. And it seems like a simple task, but at the same time, it is not that easy achieve achievable through Markdown itself. And with Office Down, you will be able to do it uh, right away. Um, you can be asked uh, to present one of the pages out of 50 pages. One of the pages should be uh, in a landscape mode. And uh, this is also not that uh, easily achievable through Markdown itself. And for example, you want to make specific formatting just to parts of the data inside of a table that you are presenting. So let me jump into Office Down itself. Office Down adds much more functionalities to generating Office documents. Um, under the hood, there is like a whole Office verse that contains uh, Officer, Flextable, MS Chart, uh, Office Down, uh, and some other packages. I highly encourage you to take a look into this. Uh, there is a lot of great documentation and uh, it will help you build uh, Word documents uh, a lot. So Office Down, the key features that you will find there is uh, there is a fine control of the document structure. Um, it will allow you to format text and tables, uh, to style documents using the templates, uh, to combine multiple documents into one. And uh, a simple one, but uh, super, super helpful, believe me, is a landscape, landscape page, uh, uh, the one that you select it to be. So what about uh, fine control of the document structure? The Vanilla Markdown allows you to add a table of contents, but uh, as I mentioned, the control over where it is exactly located is uh, quite limited. With uh, Page Down, you can add not only the table of contents, but also, for example, a list of tables or a list of figures, uh, but order of those sections is also limited. Now, Office Down is allowing you to explicitly mark where you want which parts to be generated, and uh, you will get exactly what you want. So. Jumping into the example, uh, on the left hand side, you can see the code that uh, was used to create uh, the resulting uh, Word document on the right. So first, you can see that uh, after the new page, after the title page that is automatically generated from the metadata, there is a list of figures and you uh, created by using an HTML uh, comment tag that uh, says uh, block TOC and uh, the sequence ID that we are going to use to display is uh, figure. And you can see that the first page is containing only the list of figures here. Then you can create a new page and uh, ask for a block for the table of contents. And uh, there on the third page, you actually have the full table of contents. Uh, then on the next page, you can jump into showing only the tables and it is fully up to you what kind of IDs you set uh, for, the, uh, for your figures. Um, anything that you set, you can then filter out and uh, create a table of contents from it. And it will always regenerate automatically for you whenever the whole document structure changes. Very easy and very, very helpful. Now about formatting text and tables. Um, actually, just the editable, um, editable document may not be enough. Uh, you may need to uh, adjust the styling based on some features of the data. And this is actually quite limited uh, in a normal Markdown uh, package, but it, uh, it is fully uh, available through Officeverse and through a Flextable package. And in order to create uh, this, I'm going to show you a very small example. First about formatting text. The great thing about um, uh, the Office Down package is that it's using the same structure of uh, how Microsoft Office is using the styling. So we actually create uh, different sections of text and you specify uh, the styles to them. So we can see that uh, you can specify as a variable the shortcut for italic paragraph with a font size of 11. And you can create a separate uh, variable that is going to say italic blue and it will use the italic style and add color blue to it. Then whenever you are writing text, as you can see here, you create a paragraph and inside you use a function to display text with added style that is uh, set here as a variable. And the resulting, the result you can see on the right, there is a blue italic text 
then it is followed by a normal text, and at the end there is a, a just italic text. Um, extracting the styles to separate variables uh, or functions is a very, very useful tool, especially if you are building a 50 or 100 pages uh, of report and uh, you want it to be well organized. The next one is the table. Um, the example of what you would like to achieve is when you have a data um, and to, then you want to, uh, for example, color few columns that like price X, Y, and Z uh, on, a, on an orange color whenever the price is lower than 330. And this is easily um, achievable. You can see it here. You create a flex table based on the data and you uh, apply a color function that says whenever price is less than 330, color price X, Y, and Z with uh, orange color. Just that simple, uh, but uh, very, very powerful in practice. And you can see some other examples uh, on the styling as well. So for example, whenever card is uh, bigger than 0.24, you can, uh, you can color another column, so for example, the cat. So when it comes to styling, uh, when it comes to styling documents, uh, you can also use templates. This is available in Markdown itself, uh, R Markdown. Um, Office Down allows you to do that uh, as well. You can uh, define the whole style in a separate template file, and then just uh, add this file as a, as a template to use in the resulting file that you will create. So this could be a file that you created separately in Word. You can color different headings, you can add different styles. And what is also additionally very important, you can create your own styles. So we can create a new style that is not in the document. You can name it and then you can create separate paragraphs that will use that particular style and you can do it with Office Done. But in a very simple way, uh, if you want to make the style of your document the same and as the template document, you just reference this uh, document uh, in one line at the top of your uh, R Markdown file, and all of the styles are going to be applied to, to the uh, newly generated document. Now, another very useful feature that uh, you, you may um, happen to use in your work is uh, combining multiple documents. Um, so sometimes you may want to create uh, small separate uh, reports. Uh, this could be like five different reports and you may want to combine them into one uh, big report uh, that also has a table of contents uh, that uh, actually points to different parts and uh, the numbering is updated. And this is an example how you can achieve that. As you can see, it's super simple uh, because you just use uh, on the line 34, you can see that you just use uh, a function which is called block or docs. And um, it uh, just takes as an argument the file name that is in the same workspace, uh, in the same path. And uh, you can see that this is a report one file. Uh, this one, it uh, starts with uh, number one when it comes to numbering. There is report two that also starts with one. But the combined document, the result of this, is going to give you a report one, which uh, already is uh, a second uh, in the in the list of items and the third item is report three all of the numbering is updated and the table of content is created automatically for you so very convenient feature very easy to use and uh, actually something that i do recommend uh, doing especially that if you, if you have a lot of different chunks and so they may be reusable uh, this single simple functionality will uh, like give you a lot of uh, a lot of less uh, work to to do and the last but not least, uh, using landscape portrait uh, orientation. With Office Down, you can very simply select the pages that you want to have different orientation, and you do it with a single comment. Um, you can see here on line 49, uh, the only thing you need to do is to set uh, a comment that says uh, block landscape start. Then whatever is inside of this uh, landscape block um, will be uh, in a landscape page. And then when you when you want to go back to the uh, vertical, to the portrait mode, uh, you just write block landscape stop. And as you can see, the resulting file has three, three pages and the middle page is actually a landscape one. Small functionality, believe me, you're going to use it a lot. So just to sum up the Office Down package, uh, and as you saw, it allows you to have a very good control of the document layout and structure. Uh, there is plenty of formatting options. Uh, I encourage you to take a look into documentation because you can do almost anything 
uh, you want with uh, your uh, the document. And I've seen a lot of very difficult requests that we had to go through. Uh, and everything is achievable. Almost everything, of course, is uh, achievable there. And uh, it actually allows you to easily apply the document style, a uh, white style, uh, compile multiple documents, have a landscape page, um, and many, many more. So I encourage you to look more into this and uh, use it in your daily work. Definitely is going to speed up your work and uh, make it much easier. Um, so that's all from me. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I hope that this has been useful for you. And thank you for joining the conference. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions and would, or would like to uh, get some code snippets from me. Um, you can just send me an email and I will be very happy to uh, talk to you uh, during the conference as well. Thank you, everyone, and uh, have a great day.